Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have another improper integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of x plus x times the square root of x dx. And don't worry, this one's not from the integration B, so it's not too spicy. In fact, it's pretty straightforward. Hopefully everybody likes it and it starts your weekend off on the right foot. So if you wanna pause the video, try it on your own. I'm gonna jump right in. First things first, when you have an improper integral, we have to rewrite it using a limit. So I'm gonna write this as the limit as t approaches infinity. And then now I have the integral from one to t. And I'm already gonna start getting the ball rolling on integrating. And I'm gonna start by factoring out square root of x from both terms in the denominator. Hopefully that will inspire you. Then you're just left with one plus x. And don't forget your dx up top. Okay, so we've done some similar integrals where you need to make a u substitution of this kind. We're gonna go ahead and let u equal just the square root of x. And remember, this plain old x right here, you can think of it as square root of x squared. So if I let u equal the square root of x, then du derivative of square root of x would be one over two rad x dx. Okay, do I have that? Almost, right? We have dx over rad x, but no two down there. So we'll move the two over to the other side. That means two du equals dx over rad x. Perfect. And then we do need to change our limits of integration. So since u is square root of x, these limits right now currently belong to the variable of the integral, which is x. I'm gonna substitute them in for x, that way I know what the new limits are in terms of u. So u of one would be square root of one, that's still one. And then u of t would be square root of t. So that's my new upper limit, and you just leave it like that, okay? So here we go. Are you ready? We've got the limit now. As t approaches infinity, integral goes from one to square root of t. And then dx over rad x, remember that's just two du, let me put that up top, over one plus rad x is u, so we have u squared down there now. How are you guys doing? Good. This one, you should just spot it and say, oop, I know, antiderivative of one over one plus u squared is gonna be tan inverse of u. And the two just comes along for the right. So we've got limit, t goes to infinity, two, tan inverse of u, and let's evaluate that from one to square root of t. Okay, fabulous. And now evaluating at the upper and lower limits, keep writing lim every step of the way, you guys don't, don't drop that. Two times tan inverse of the square root of t minus tan inverse of one. And then in order to evaluate this limit, you do need to know what the graph of tan inverse looks like. So in case you forgot, let me just do a little rough sketch over here. Like e to the x, ln of x, and tan inverse of x are some of the most important graphs to have in your brain, especially when you're in calculus because so many limits involve those functions. And there's no way to compute the limit, you know, without just knowing the graph. I mean, unless you have a calculator, but most of the time you're not allowed one. Okay, so those are the horizontal asymptotes, pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Let's not make it so wonky, you know? Come on, there we go. Beautiful. There's tan inverse of x. So here's the deal. t is going to infinity, so square root of t is also going to infinity. What is tan inverse approaching as the argument approaches infinity? It's leveling off at pi over two. So this entire term right here is approaching pi over two. Minus, and then tan inverse of one, that's just a constant, you should know that value. It's pi over four. And then we still have two out front. Now notice I'm not writing lim anymore because I've already evaluated the limit and I don't even have any t's in here. So it wouldn't make sense to write limit as t goes somewhere. There's no t's, okay? Then pi over two minus pi over four, that's pi over four. 
but I'm going to multiply that by 2. So my final answer is pi over 2. Voila! Which tells me the improper integral converges. Very good. So remember, when you're determining whether or not an improper integral is convergent or divergent, all you're interested in is whether or not the limit exists as a finite number. We don't care what number it is. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thought I'd give you guys a convergent improper integral since we, we did so many divergent ones recently. And also stay tuned. I have more fun integrals coming your way. I'm also recording the second half of the Calculus 2 exam on sequences and series from 2019. And I have a Calc 1 exam I'm going to record solutions to soon. And almost ready to make a new linear algebra and differential equations videos for those of you members who are waiting so patiently. All right, you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. I love you all. Thank you so much for your support. And I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.